This is our 2011 Airstream Classic Limited front bedroom queen. Okay. Um, so when I decided that I wanted to add some electronics, I knew that I needed to get under the underneath the bed, which is more or less built in. Uh, but I didn't really know for sure what I would find when I got under there. I couldn't really find a lot of guidance on the internet. So this video is kind of an afterthought. I thought it might be helpful for some other people. Um, but anyway, um, when I got in here, I could see, as, as you can see here, um, you maybe can't, I'll tell you. There's a good bit of room of space, which was hidden under the bed and the furniture. And you can see this line that goes from left to right, right there. There, everything behind that line and up to the top of that box right there was, is empty space. Okay, so it contains some electrical equipment. <clears throat> and then the two black boxes are the battery boxes, which are accessible from outside. And then that is also a uh, toolbox or storage box, which is accessible from outside. So, um, like I said, this is kind of an afterthought, but anyway, if you uh, are needing to do something like this, <clears throat> here's what you'll find when you take out the bed, all right? Now, I've added the black and red bus bar, and then this, is a Victron um, battery monitor, a smart shunt, okay? Um, but not counting the uh, uh, welding cabling and, and those parts, this was all Airstream stuff. This black box, I'm pretty sure, has to do with the brakes and the lights. Um, and then you have a positive bus bar here and a negative bus bar that's just poking out, just peeking out from right there, okay? And then this device is uh, the solenoid switch, which is the battery disconnect, okay? Um, this, the uh, switch for that, to turn it off and on, is right next to the front door. And uh, on Air Forum, there was some speculation as to what you actually accomplished when you turn that on and off, but I can tell you right now, when the battery switch is in the store position, then that disconnects the, the battery from all of the DC loads, okay? Um, except for the brakes and the electric jack, the, the tongue jack. Uh, those are on the other side of the disconnect switch, but, this this means that um, when you're when that switch is in the store position and not the use position, uh, then the charger converter is not charging the battery, and there's no interface between the the charger converter and the and the batteries, which is actually a good thing. Um, but anyway, this is what you would find, and also I found this which I was not expecting. This little bundle of three wires labeled solar. So I assume that those come out on the roof somewhere. Uh, that's a pleasant surprise because I would like to add solar sometime. But anyway, this is part one and uh, I will show the, uh, the steps of putting it back together and you'll have a better idea also uh, just to show you. Um, the other piece of equipment I was installing besides the battery monitor is an, um, this Victron, um, DC to DC charger, which allows you to fully charge your battery using your alternator while you're towing the vehicle. But that's really not what this, uh, uh, video is about. But, uh, anyway, that's it. And I'll show you the rest of it as it's put together so you can have an idea of how to take it apart. And, and by the way, it's like 20, 30 minutes once you know what you're doing and what you have to do and you go ahead and do it. 20, 30 minutes, take it apart. I suspect it'll be 
20 or 30 minutes to put it back together too if all goes as planned and uh, we'll see okay i'm ready to start reassembling the bed in the bedroom on my front bedroom airstream now the first step is uh gonna be to put together uh this box more or less that encloses the electronics and the battery boxes um, it had to be taken apart because you can't get it out of the trailer without taking it apart. So here we go. Okay, As you can see this is secured here along the back and here. The next step is to install the two um, side cabinets, uh, which attach using this little screw that angles in right there. A cleat just inside the door to the anchor to the floor, and then it was glued in place to these cleats on the wall. And I'm going to do the same thing. Um, the glue was not particularly strong, but that was a feature instead of a flaw because it would have been very difficult to get that little cabinet out. Uh, but the glue pretty easily popped loose uh, once I removed the screws holding it to the floor just inside the door and then that one screw going back in the corner. Okay. So the bed pedestal drawer base comes out as a unit once you have it disconnected from the floor and it's actually uh, just small enough to maneuver out all in one piece you might want to uh, tape the drawer slides shut so that they don't swing in and out while you're moving it and get down the pedestal screws down through this cleat through those angle brackets, screws the floor through these cleats, and that's all that holds it. You can get the drawers out by pushing this black button right here. Now we get the drawer loose. By the way, right there is the point of this project, or a lot of the point of this project, is the uh, Victron DC to DC charger. You'll probably want to uh, tape the uh, uh, spring arms up before you move this around too, uh, so that they don't flop around and get damaged. These lid supports um, just pop on and off of the little ball fitting there and then that spring clip holds it on. To get it off you just put a screwdriver in that little slot and prime back. That's all there is to it. And there you see is the finished reassembled product. So if your queen bed, front bedroom, Airstream trailer is kind of like this, then that should give you some idea of uh, what you need to do to uh, get under it to uh, get to the trailer wiring uh, in the, the battery boxes. There's a good bit of space under there, uh, as you've seen. and right there just for your information if you're interested in doing a, uh, a DC to DC charger that's where I put mine I believe it's a safe spot 
the, as far as airflow. Uh, I don't know how hot it'll actually get. I think it's like 150 watts of heat it dissipates. So like a light bulb, a pretty big light bulb. Um, but anyway, that should uh, keep it so that it can ventilate and uh, protect it from anything like bed clothes from getting directly against it. And uh, that's that. Thank you very much.